this lady came in and described what a brain tumour was, but at the time people were still like a bit unsure what to do like, around me because I was a bit different. Some of them like just thought, I have a brain injury and that's it, I can get on, that's fine. But when really it's not fine because I've got like a lot of side effects to do with. ABI, um, or acquired brain injury, is often called a hidden disability. It's really easy to see a child come back into school, they're often doing really well post-injury, but what's not seen is all those hidden difficulties that are happening for them at that time. I used to like enjoy running around and going outside and stuff, but now I don't. And I just get really tired if I run around. You find it hard to remember things as well. Yeah, I don't, my memory is shocking. They expect you to do your homework when you get home that night and I will have forgotten everything that I've learned in the day. We work with children with the broad range of um, acquired brain injuries. Um, that can vary from children who have had a brain injury through an accident or a fall, which would be a traumatic brain injury. Um, and it can then also include children who have acquired a brain injury through infection, illness, something like a brain tumour but some of those will have a very severe injury where it will impact on every aspect of their life. It's really um, not always that straightforward to see some of the more subtle difficulties. These can be things like difficulties with processing speed, um, memory, attention, other cognitive issues around executive function which are your higher level cognitive skills. The children that I, young people that I work with also have difficulties with emotions and behaviour there's the social impact of having had time in hospital and of being somebody who perhaps is quite different after the injury to the person that they were before. I like doing art and drama, I could always remember doing that. I'm a bit more of like a down person now, I think before I got ill I was a very positive person but now I'm a bit more like a bit of a downer. <laughs> I know you'd say that wouldn't you? every brain is very different and every brain injury is very different. One of the really important things that we would say, certainly in terms of fatigue and also thinking about processing speed and memory, is giving breaks. And those breaks need to happen fairly frequently, so there's time for the brain to catch up on the learning that it's doing and re-establish the focus that it needs. The staff have had to make a variety of different adaptations for Emily's needs. It's important that children with acquired brain injury have a routine. In science, we get these sheets and it's got like what's going to happen in the lessons, like you're going to get your books out, we're going to write the date and title. So it's just like a routine to help, to help me to know what I'm doing. It was just for me and my friend Ewan, he's had some disabilities as well. She just puts them out for everyone now, just so like, so I don't feel that I'm the only one that has to have that, so I don't feel like I'm really special in any way. It's really helpful to try and get rid of tasks that aren't essential. So things like copying tasks where it's actually using their processing capacity um, in a way that isn't particularly helpful. So if they can have a handout so they can really focus on what they need to learn, then actually that's going to be much more helpful for them. We would always promote the idea of pre-learning. So actually having exposure to any material that's going to be delivered in a lesson beforehand, if possible, in a child or young person's planner, a teacher could make some recommendations of where they could look to prepare them for the next lesson, particularly things like keywords really, um, so that when they are coming across information in a lesson it's not entirely new because we know that that's going to help the pathways in the brain to process that information more efficiently. You've got to try and find a way to explain it to me like in the simplest possible way, like you now they say like quarters and hearts, you've got to split a cake 
you've got to half it and half it, you've got to break it down. Like you've got to find the easy, a really easy way to explain it. So another intervention that I think is really important from a school and teacher perspective is just to think about the social participation. So after an acquired brain injury we know that children and young people don't participate in everyday life in the same way as their peers. Um, we've introduced things like buddy schemes or mentoring where they can actually take some ownership over learning in some way. Participation is high on the agenda for rehab. After an acquired brain injury there can be a number of difficulties with behaviour. Things like organising, planning, managing impulsivity. We know that they can be skills that children don't always acquire in the way that they should do in adolescence um, after they've had a brain injury. It's really, really important that teachers do understand where this behaviour might be coming from so that it's not misinterpreted as something that's perhaps intentional. We're not going to be wanting to, to punish them in some way for that because that will not be meaningful to them. If we can figure out what's going on for that child, are they getting really fatigued? Is everything in the lesson becoming quite overwhelming for them? Can we step in before the point when actually that behaviour becomes an issue? It's really important for a child to maintain good friendships, to have good social support around them and emotional support around them. It is very important that we celebrate every progress that is made. It is also crucially important to be able to communicate clearly with the family, to be able to ensure that they are informed uh, of that progress. For an NQT who is working with a child or young person with a brain injury, it's probably the most important thing to remember is that every brain injury is different and that support can be individualised. A child who has an injury at the age of eight um, may well have a brain injury that looks quite different at the age of 15 or 16. Teachers who have perhaps um, been with a child at primary school might see those difficulties that they have at that time. Then they transition to secondary school which can be very challenging. Often the brain injury gets forgotten about. The difficulties that emerge later aren't always linked back to that brain injury. Hold that in mind. Is there something that I can be finding out about? Something that I can be doing to offer that support? Reach out for training because training is there and support is there. It's really, really important to have the involvement of other organisations that would have that history and also to involve the parents. So they are the experts, so the parents need to be involved at every stage. There's lots of, lots of organisations out there who can offer extra support and information. Um, my advice would be for teachers to look on both local and national levels. So I work in Nottinghamshire and we have very specific pathways for returning to education after a brain injury, which we would hope that schools will be tapping into and using the expert advice from all the professionals who work within that pathway. Um, on top of that, we've then got national organisations such as the Child Brain Injury Trust um, and the Children's Trust who offer really, really good support. They often have workers who are based um, regionally or locally who can offer support to schools. There's training packages and so on. So I think it's really important that they're looking at that kind of local and then the wider um, sort of services that are available as well. Be flexible you're going to have to adapt for that child's needs on an hourly basis. Celebrate everything that they achieve. They've endured an enormous trauma and build a sound, open, professional relationship with the family. 